Tanan Chato is not your typical daycare. Here, toddlers spend all day immersed in an endangered language called Gwich'in. It's an Alaska native language with fewer than 250 advanced speakers. This kind of daycare space is called a language nest, and it's a method used by communities around the world to revive their languages. With this age group, we allow them to play and we, we speak in our language and learn our colors and we count. Hilda Johnson is an infant and toddler teacher who spoke Gwich'in growing up. She's been working at Tanan Chato since it opened in March 2021. The first week was kind of hard because they didn't understand. But the more we were consistent, they started understanding us. Our worldview, our philosophy, our way of life is so embedded in our language. Um, it's rich with knowledge. And it's connected to our identity and who we are as Gwich'in people. This is Yvonne Peter a former tribal chief who made a career change to start the first Gwich'in language nest in the U.S. He grew up speaking English and is currently learning Gwich'in. The key to the language nest model is a proficient first language speaker just speaking in the language in a room or a space with young kids, and they will acquire the language. I mean, it's not, you know, magic. It's just the way language is acquired. Gracie. But reviving a language is a tremendous task. With so few Gwich'in speakers out there, someone like Hilda, who has both the language skills and experience in early childhood education, is really hard to find. What's more, even Hilda doesn't fully master Gwich'in. We had to ask my mom how to say certain things because after not speaking for so long, I had forgotten how to say some things. The most advanced Gwich'in speakers are all elderly, while younger generations are more comfortable with English. That's why Hilda's mother comes into the language nest two hours a day to answer Hilda and Yvonne's questions. It's a common pattern in endangered language revival. Teachers are often learners themselves, and they turn to elders for guidance. A big reason why Native American languages are endangered is forced assimilation. From the 1870s to the mid-20th century, the U.S. government sent hundreds of thousands of Native kids into a school system that aimed to westernize them. Many kids faced physical abuse for speaking indigenous languages. With my mother, there was one of the early teachers who literally hit her over the head with a log, a piece of firewood, and for speaking her language. And uh, my mom's quite defiant, and she said she spoke her language again, and he hit her again. And she spoke our language again defiantly, and he said, I would hit you again with this log, but I'm worried that it's gonna cause brain damage to you, so you better just you know, get out of here. My mother had not even shared that story with me until we started Tenancheto. Our parents or grandparents' generation chose not to speak that language to their kids because they didn't want their kids to suffer those same humiliations and wounds. And that was very hard for my generation. There was this hurt of like not feeling native enough in some cases because we weren't able to understand our language or to speak our language. Abba. 
Language revival activists say that indigenous communities are more healthy and successful when they're able to maintain their languages. Right now, there are only four children at Tanan Chato, and their language journey is just beginning. To increase their language exposure, the Language Nest offers weekly classes to their parents. The classes are taught by Dr. Hishinlai Peter, one of the leaders of the effort to revive Gwich'in. And for the future, the Language Nest aims to expand its capacity and offer great school education in Gwich'in. There are many challenges ahead, but the team is already feeling the rewards. When the children come to me and say something in Gwich'in, it just brings sometimes tears to my eyes, listening to little babies um, talk in our native language. You get to play with two or three-year-olds, you know, for hours at a time, kind of this tender and wonderful experience of being excited and alive to everything that there is in the world. The fact that we're creating a set of young people who are going to be proficient speakers of our language and they're going to be able to carry our language forward into the future is incredibly significant.